the next website that we are going to start working through uh, to review is the website of John Davy Photography. Now, John is a photographer up in Edinburgh, in Scotland, and we're going to take a look through the way that he uses his website at the moment and some improvements he can make um, to help with his search engine optimization and a few other bits helping convert some of his inquiries to leads. First of all, we arrive at uh, John's website. John's not got a specific logo, so we've, we've got a text area at the top of the page up here, a nice headline. And then we break into a COVID-19 update, which updates people about the things that are going on at the moment with COVID and exhibitions and events. And that's the primary focus of John's work. Then we come into a, a small gallery of images, which is a nice mix of photos. It's uh, a nice size, you know, it's, it's only nine pictures, so we're not getting any overwhelm. And then we've got a nice piece of copy here, all around what he does. We then separate our visitors out into the three main areas of his business, of conferences, events, and PR. And then we make the, the personal stuff into people, theater, and then and the area of Portobello. As we move down to the bottom part of the page, there's a, a bit here saying about being a fully insured and qualified member of the Institute. It would be lovely to see a, a logo here that would draw some more attention to it. Um, and maybe if we move this box of, of text here, we could actually write a paragraph about what it means to be a qualified professional photographer, uh, balancing out the, the logo that would fit in this space nicely. As we get to the bottom of the page, we've got what I call the junk drawer which has got a, a, a mini menu in the bottom here of some bits that aren't needed at the top of the page. Um, going through the background of John's website, there is a blog, so it would be useful to actually link into that blog and make use of that for the SEO benefits that it provides. So you could pop the link to the blog in down here on the bottom menu because it doesn't need to be on the top, John. If you've got the opportunity on your header to change uh, this box area around the um, home button, then I would be inclined to, to highlight the one on the end that is the contact button, because actually we want people to go from left to right and we want them to, to make the move to contacting you. So if you can change the settings in Weebly, which is the platform which uh, John's built this on, then it would be a great idea to, to put the box around the contact button. When we looked at the scores for John's website, Scorn, uh, John has got one of the best scoring sites that I've looked at through these critiques. Um, and But there are still some improvements we can be making, um, predominantly mainly around SEO, really, for John. Just some tweaks that would help him get found a little bit more. The title tags and the meta descriptions are very bland and they could do with being uh, improved throughout the site. Because this is the way that it shows on Google and we can do a little bit more to entice people to get in touch with us, especially on some of the more specialist pages. But we'll talk about that more in a minute. With the design of the pages at the moment, we've got no H1 header. And I'm not quite sure why the pages have been designed in that way. But if you think about a newspaper, we need a big, bold headline. We then need some subheadings as we work our way down and through. Uh, and then some, some tables or images might have a, a headline as well. So the main page headlines H1, the subheads are page two, and then the little citations that work underneath graphs and images and any other important but less important um, headings, we work down the, the other sizes. So it'd be good to, to build some of those into the page. It would also make it easier to skim read down the page because we'd have some subheadings about um, bits like here so personal or local we could have life in portobello for example would be a, a h3 heading here so the the main header for that area would be a h2 and then a subheading underneath this heading would be a h3 so the areas we came down to the bottom here would be about um, professional qualified photographer could be a h2 and then details of the, the bodies that you're part of We've got a lovely mix of uh, different keywords popping up throughout the site, but not enough of those are around the actual area that we want to be ranking for at the moment. All of the images that are on here have got alt tags at the moment, but as we go through some of the others, we could probably improve some of them. Some One of the areas that I looked at was the file naming of your pictures. With a little bit of work, as you're adding new stuff to the site, the file names that you can add could be in a, a local search optimized way and that can improve. We also need to build in some a little bit more internal linking. 
So I know that in your blog, we, you've talked about some of the venues that you work with. So a few of these names here could link off to those pages about those venues and the galleries to do with those venues that you've done before. You've already done the legwork there. So you can just link those into here and that will help you with a few more internal links. Some external links uh, to benefit your business as well. So a few of these in the next paragraph, like the, the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society might be one that you linked out to. Uh, and then that would help you build some authority there as well. So we actually know it's a real business that you've been doing business for. The personal and specific, uh, personal and local, make it specific. We could do the, a small gallery, maybe three or six pictures here, just to tie back into this paragraph of text, because there's an awful lot of text here. We need to add a few links into a few bits of the text, but then we need the pictures here to tie back in to the, the story that we're talking about in the text. You could either add them before, which would uh, flow nicely, or you could add them in this space just before the buttons. My preference would be to add it before the heading. So that's uh, those. Let's move on to the next part of the site. So we've got a blog at the moment that you've integrated. I've had to go there manually. You've done some of the legwork there. It's mentioned up in the header. Um, Predominantly, I, I think you're using this more for SEO purposes. But what I would do with the, with these blog posts is I would use some of these on your social media um, and link your social media post back to these parts of your website. A lovely gallery of images here works really, really nicely. And um, that's quite a nice way to nice article to post across to your social media to keep people interested in what you're what you're up to. Make sure that again that these images are, are, are named in the right convention before you upload them and that they're actually linking back through in a, in a way that's going to benefit your uh, SEO. I imagine with the amount of uh, mentions of Portobello that you probably rank quite highly for, for the term Portobello, probably more than photography in some of the local area um, parts. So heading back through to the pages, I love the way that to, the, the images on your website are absolutely fantastic when it comes to storytelling. Um, you've got a real knack and, a, and an eye for, for the photography. Um, and the, the images you've picked work perfectly. As we go through some of the galleries like here, I picked up on this picture of Nicola Sturgeon. I did a little um, look at the coding. And at the moment, as I said before, if we look here on the right hand side, it tells us what the image is called conference gallery number three original dot JPG. Now, if we um, I don't know the name of the, the the venue, but for example, if that said Nicola Sturgeon at Glen Eagles um, dot JPG, then Glen Eagles is a is a term that would uh, have a, a an element of local SEO to it. Nicola Sturgeon is a term that people would search for, and it would have more benefit to you than Conference Gallery Three Original. So. I will write a blog post about naming of files, um, but there's a there's some work that you can do when you're putting the galleries together that will actually mean that the actual file name and the alt text and the description that you add to the picture um, really does do you some some good rather than um, just sat there. I imagine that that is probably the similar kind of situation with most of the images that are going on throughout the site again yeah, we've got conference gallery 17 um, and you've added the alt text evening socials to give it a title here uh, but there's more oh no this one hasn't got the alt text because just after here there's no alt no comment after the alt so there's no alternate text again it's time consuming it takes effort and it takes some discipline but it can really benefit you in the long run when it comes to your search engine optimization. Bearing in mind that your site is, is kind of scoring 92 at the moment, all of these little changes that we're talking about can really help us improve the site that little bit more. What I loved about the site is you were very clear about what a, a day's coverage with is. I would lose this text here with an underline and I would make sure that this was a button. One of the things I would do when we do calls to action we want people to get in touch. We want them to call us today. Uh, it needs to be direct. It needs to be get in touch. You could add that hyperlink to contact me to feel free to discuss requirements. You could add a hyperlink in there. But this needs to be a button that they're going to click that's going to take them through to your contact us page. Now, for me, that button needs to either be white on this purple background or it needs to be bright blue like this um, like 
most hyperlinks that we're used to seeing now in text, we're used to seeing a blue button. So I would have those calls to action. Again, at the bottom of the page here, there will be another call to action saying, um, you know, plan, plan, planning your event, contact us today to book your, your date. You know, make it direct. The reason they're coming here is to book you as their photographer. So we need those to be direct calls to action buttons that uh, people can really work it well. With these bits here, the text is laid out in a nice way. It's a list of information. I would just add bullet points to, to those just to make it visually a little bit easier on the eye. As we go through, you mentioned some venues. As I said before, they're in the blog. We need to be clicking across to those in the blog just so that uh, it ties up some internal linking. I ran some SEO um, analysis on your site in the background here. One of the tools that we use within our business. I looked at the page titles. We've got quite a few here that are duplicating across different areas. They're, they're duplicated here across parts of the blog. You've used the term photographic assignments um, and then various assignments. I would change this from assignments to, to case studies and then name the company or case study and name the location. And then that gives us some SEO ability. We don't need John Davy photography necessarily in the page titles of every single page. We could have Edinburgh PR photographer. We could have Edinburgh conference photographer, all sorts of different things in these terms so that we're actually pulling the site in via SEO into different conversations. Uh, depending on which page that people are going to. But there's some work there. We've got to remove the duplicates. There's 30 duplicate pages. Some of them are too long, so they're getting truncated when they're appearing in Google. Um, and some of them are too short because Google wants us to have an optimum kind of size on the page titles. The next important one is what's called our meta description. That's that little bit of text that pops up underneath our name and title in Google. And as we can see here, there's 44 of your pages that have got no page description to them. So, for example, this one here about theatre or this one here about in the studio, this should be a page description that's going to entice you to click on that link when it pops up in Google. And at the moment, we're missing a trick because there's 43 of these, uh, 44 of these pages that are missing a meta description. And as you head down through the others, we've got a few comments about Edinburgh. Um, but we can make that a lot more location based to make sure you're, you're popping up in more conversations when people are searching for you in Google. Next, we look at the, the H1 and H2 headings and a sim similar kind of position. There are quite a few pages, 24 pages that are missing a H1 heading. There are 17 pages that have got a duplicate. Google doesn't like duplicates, so we should be uh, changing the wording on some of these. It's, it's a little bit difficult with these ones when we've got, um, for example, an event name but uh, you can you can spice these up a little bit um, with a little bit of creativity. So that was the H1. So there's a lot of pages here, location, portraits, vacation photographer, about where there is no reason why you shouldn't have a H1. Um, again, with contact, sh the shop, headshots, all of these should have a H1 um, heading through them. And then H2s, we, at the moment, have got 46 that are duplicated. And we've got generally a lot of H2s. And I wonder if that's mainly because of the theme that you're using. But this one here, for example, appears as leave a reply, which is the comments on our page. So maybe if we added some more text into here, and we can always go back and do this after uh, an event. So this was about, done back in 2019. We could go back into this now. We could add a couple of events uh, about uh, this venue. Um, and what the gathering was about, and just uh, write 300 to 500 words and, and pop a title heading into there. 300 to 500 words sounds like a lot. It's two or three paragraphs of text about an event, and that gives us uh, some content there to, to be searchable under search engine optimization. So H1s, H2s, we've talked about page headers and descriptions. Then lastly, we look at our images. And if you look at all of your images, they tend to have a number, some of them you've started to do some bits like 
vacation photographer to tell you which areas they're in. But you could be putting something like vacation photographer Edinburgh and then a file number. You could be putting something like um, headshot photographer Edinburgh, the file number. And then that would start to tie up your your pictures with the area that you're you're living and working in and the references that you're making. So there's just a, a brief background into how we can improve some of the um, the SEO on your site. We've got some really great elements to your website. The, the visual storytelling is absolutely fantastic. I love the pictures. I love the way that you you've, in, you've started to do some work with the text and I think that every single page should be having a very clear call to action about getting you involved in doing their their photography. So I would intersperse a, a couple of different places on the page because people don't always look at everything because they, they can see whether you're competent very, very quickly. And we then just want them to get in, in touch, which leads us to the Contact Us page. Now, we're at a bit of a failing on the Contact Us page there's a couple of things that Google brought in. One was called the NAP protocol, which is a name, address, and phone number protocol. And this is one of the reasons I advocate to everybody using Google My Business uh, as a tool to, to share content, to, to create citations back to your website. Because with the NAP protocol, Google wants us to have a name, address, and telephone number. And it wants to validate those about, against other citations about your business across the internet. It's how it knows that you're still in business, that you're still at the same um, venue, that you're still, uh, I've got the same telephone number. And it's using tools like Google My Businesses app that you can update your, your office hours. And with all the COVID, you could put uh, messages on there. And it just helps Google link back to your site and say, hey, this guy's still in business. This isn't an old dormant website. Um, they're still here. They're still doing stuff. And we still need to, to make sure that they rank. So I would definitely encourage you to make sure that your, your name and address and telephone number is definitely on your contact us page i would also include a, a map of edinburgh here i wouldn't link to the actual location where you are because that's not necessary with a google map but if it shows the area that you cover it's quite important and i'd add some text there as to the kind of zones that you're happy to travel to and, and photograph in so if you just cover Edinburgh, that's fine. You know, I'd put there very clearly that you'd only undertake commissions in Edinburgh or that you cover, um, you know, 20 mile radius or those kind of details here as well. For a lot of the sites that we're producing at the moment, we're including the, the name, address and telephone number down here in the, the junk drawer at the bottom. So it's actually visible on every single page. So it means that Google can do its work. All in all, a very nice, clean, well-designed website that's easy for people to use, easy for people to, to access, and should be ranking really well in Google. Just needs a few tweaks to keep up to date with some of the latest standards. But I've really enjoyed going through your work, John, um, and uh, you know, you're know you a real good storyteller and uh, loved, enjoyed, loved looking at the, uh, the pictures that we went through. Thanks very much. I'm Jamie Morgan, and we were reviewing the website of John Davey Photography today.